Hey guys, so I want to talk to you today about emotional eating. So emotional eating definitely has an impact on your ability to lose weight and body fat, but also has a massive impact on your relationship with food. So when we think about emotional eating, it's exactly what it says in its name. It's a response to a stress, to an event, to an emotion, to something that's happened. And we deal with that with food and alcohol. That's the way that we make ourselves feel better. And the reason why we temporarily feel better is because we start negatively reinforcing in the brain that these things are going to help us produce the happy chemicals, which they do temporarily. We start to get that uptick, we start to feel better. But what usually follows, because we've then dealt with the stress with food and alcohol, especially if we're trying to lose weight and body fat, we tend to feel worse. We tend to feel more lethargic, more tired. We've blown our calories. We tend to feel guilty. All these things tend to happen when we start to spiral out of control. But the thing is, we're choosing to deal with that stressor with food and booze. It's a choice. But half the time, we're not thinking when we're grabbing the food and booze because it's been such a thing that we've built up over time. We don't even think about it when we're doing it. And half the time, we've not stopped ourselves from doing it before we've done it. So the first thing that we need to do is analyze the stressor. So is it really as big and as important as what we're making it out to be? And I'm not talking about the life-altering stressors because obviously we deal with those massively differently. I'm talking about the day-to-day -day stuff that's a constant reoccurring theme. The thing that's actually most likely to take you off track is the constant stuff. So before we start reaching for food and booze, Think, think about it logically. Is it really as, as bad as what we've made it out to be? Can we handle this differently? And really, half the time with these stressors is in three weeks time from now, you're not even gonna be thinking about the thing that you stressed about today. So if we can deal with it better, if we can find a more logical approach to dealing with this stress, rather than taking ourselves way off track, that's gonna be healthier, because it means we're gonna start building up better coping mechanisms, and also we're gonna have a more logical approach. We're gonna start breaking the cycle of food and booze. Okay, but the other thing I tend to find is that often when people are dealing with emotional eating, they're not even thinking about food in general. You're not following a nutritional plan, you don't have any sort of framework, so it's unrestricted eating and drinking. And that in turn, again, then means that that becomes your day-to-day -day habits, not just your stress response habits. So by having a nutritional plan in place where you know what your calories are, and especially if we're dieting flexibly, we've actually got an approach that we can use here that also still includes a little bit of what you fancy while still eating healthily, whilst actually building mental and physical capacity, whilst obviously improving energy output, all the good things that we want. We want to feel good. We want to deal with things well. And this is going to allow us to do it because we can actually now incorporate a little bit of what we fancy. So instead of it being a couple of bottles of wine, just because we're dealing with stress, we might just be able to have one and feel great, feel fine. We've dealt with it and we've moved on. So thinking logically, having a nutritional plan, really important. Third thing, do we have a physical outlet? So the stress response is fight or flight. So we're either running away from the stressor and we're dealing with it with food or booze, or by just not doing anything at all physically alongside that, which then means we're just swinging calories, we're the, the other side, we're amplifying fat storage and all that sort of stuff. But if we can actually find a physical outlet, we're gonna to start to see that the stress response is reduced. So research has shown us that people that do train, people that lift weights, people that do uh, exercise, these people have a better stress response and a better coping mechanism and strategy to stress physiologically because we've got an outlet. So we start to actually feel better from training. We start to get, again, happy chemicals, good chemicals, positive neurotransmitters, gives us more clarity, gives us that physical outlet. You feel better after you've trained and then you tend to not, again, binge. You tend to not go down the route of dealing with stress in the same way. So those are three simple ways that we can actually deal with emotional eating and start to turn the tide on emotional eating. It's not gonna be something that's gonna happen overnight. So oftentimes when I'm working with clients that do struggle with emotional eating, what we tend to find is the binge, binges become less and less and less and less, and they tend to get back on track much faster. So it is a process, it's a learning curve. And it's not gonna be something that you'll crack immediately. But the three things are, Let's essentially have that nutritional plan. Let's step back from that stressor. Let's see if it's as important as what we're making it out to be. And let's deal with it physically. Can we actually 
get a better way of dealing with that stress response in the way that we were intended to. So let's get that physical component, let's deal with the stressor in the way that physiologically we're going to respond best.